Hello everybody, this is the Socialist Guy, and today we're talking about the Great Pyramids of Giza. How the Great Pyramids of Giza were built has been a mystery until this day. The main hypothesis is where the blocks of limestone were cut in local quarries, carved using copper tools, transported to the pyramid site, and then pulled up the ramps and placed using wedges and levers. However, in the mid-1980s, a French scientist called David Ovitz proposed that the pyramids were cast in place using granular limestone aggregates and an alkali alumina silicate based binder. The famous pyramids of Giza are made of three pyramids, Khufu or the Great Pyramid which is 481 feet high, Khafra which is 451 feet high and Monkara which is 213 feet high. The Great Pyramid was made from about 2.3 million large blocks weighing 6 million tons total. All these pyramids are mainly made of limestone, mortar, some granite which is why they stood well against erosion and weathering. Throughout the years, many have come up with hypotheses how the pyramids were built from superhumans to aliens, but perhaps the most common one is the carve and hoist hypothesis I mentioned at the beginning of this video. However, this hypothesis has several issues. First, Khufu's pyramid contains some 2.3 million blocks, averaging 2.5 tons each, with average dimensions of 1.3 meters by 1.3 meters by 0.7 meters. The following problems are evident. A. Carving limestone is wasteful, yet no waste piles of limestone are found. B. Copper is soft, so copper tools require frequent sharpening, and to this day, not a single tool was found in Giza. C. Rams that can accommodate the range of blocks and moving crew would be similar in size to the pyramids themselves, but yet no trace of rams have been found. Second, the remaining blocks fit as close as 0.05 millimeters across some vertical faces where it is reported that the human hair would not fit between them. Indeed, carving the blocks with copper tools would not produce such accuracy. Davidovitz proposed that the pyramids were cast in place with a wet mix of limestone particles and a binder tamped into molds which in time hardened into concrete with similar microscopic appearance and properties of native limestone. Such an innovation would have saved a lot of time in construction. Until recently, it was hard for geologists to distinguish the differences between natural and synthetic limestone. But according to Professor Hug of the French National Aerospace Research Agency and Professor Barsom of Drexel University in Philadelphia, the covering of the Great Pyramids at Giza consists of two types of stones, one from the quarries and one man-made. As a result, Barsom suggests that the Egyptians used both man-made made cast blocks along with limestone blocks quarried and pulled to the site in accordance with the carve and hoist hypothesis. Barson believes that only the exterior casing blocks and the blocks at higher levels of the pyramids were cast blocks. This makes sense, the casing blocks were visible, so cast in place blocks with extremely accurate joints would be appropriate to exterior application, and the blocks at higher levels of the pyramids were harder to reach for quarried blocks pulled up the ramps. Replacing these with cast in place blocks made the process faster and easier. They found traces of a rapid chemical reaction which did not allow natural crystallization. This reaction would be puzzling if the stones were quarried, but perfectly logical if one accepts that they were cast like concrete. The professors agree with the Davidovitz theory that soft limestone was quarried on damp wet side of Giza Plateau. This was then dissolved in large Nile fed pools until it become a watery fluid. Lime from fireplace ash and salt were mixed in with it. The water evaporated leaving a moist clay-like mixture. A fraction of the laborers would have been needed to haul packs of concrete to wooden forms placed exactly where each block was needed where it would sit hard in a few days. The stones also had a higher water content which is unusual for natural limestone found in Giza. Mr. Davidovitz and his team tested the method, producing a large block of concrete limestone in 10 days. Also, in both the inner and outer casing stones, the stones were amorphous, meaning their atoms were not arranged in a regular and periodic array. However, sedimentary rocks such as limestone are never amorphous. Barsom recently discovered the presence of silicon dioxide in one of the samples. This discovery further confirms that these blocks are not natural limestone. The 
other difficult question of how the builders were able to precisely maintain the angle of the pyramids can be solved now. The explanation is that the angle was built into the molds of the casing blocks. Another positive of this method is the ramps would not have had to extend to the top of the pyramids, no longer making it an issue. Hard evidence in form of chemical analysis is clearly needed to confirm some of this hypothesis. The concrete researchers say that they will not be able to prove this theory conclusively until the Egyptian authorities give them access to more samples. As predicted, new ideas that suggest that even a portion of the stones in the pyramids at Giza were man-made blocks have erupted into a fire storm of resistance, most notably from those with the most to lose when an established theory is pulled apart. Archaeologists say there is simply no evidence that the pyramids are built of anything other than huge limestone blocks. Davidovitz said that's a problem. The big archaeologists and the Egypt's tourist industry want to preserve romantic ideas. Obviously, archaeologists here are not speaking based on facts and thus we must side with the research and the scientific method and disregard emotions and the romance in science. This is a matter of what you can prove not what you think. There's a lot to unpack here and I encourage you to read the references in the description down below if you want to get more information. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. See you next time.